but I'll uh, welcome everybody. Let me get rid of our boom. Good evening. Yeah. All right. So uh, welcome to our uh, weekly uh, test taking live stream Q and A. I've got uh, the test geek himself, Brian Lee with us today. Um, let us know what series you're taking and uh, where you're joining us from. We always like to start out our live streams, if you're new with us, with what I call brief or debrief. Debrief is things people they've seen and people ask, is it on the test? And we say yes or no. And so uh, today I had a successful test taker that said they got a couple questions on interval funds, which is a closed end fund that doesn't trade supply and demand on their Series 7. Uh, it's one of my pet peeves, Brian, that test prep vendors do not call their Q, Q banks. And this uh, test prep vendor uh, had a whole section on reading the tape. I haven't had anybody tell me they said anything about reading the tape in years. So I wouldn't be spending any time on learning how to read the tape. Uh, 65, 66 debrief. A uh, couple of people have seen questions not surprised about a federally tax exempt mutual fund. And what you're getting tested on is distinguishing that the dividends are the distributions from the coupons, the nominal yield of fixed or state of return, and they're tax-free, but the capital gains distributions from such a fund would not. And so that's come up a couple of times. You know, with standard debrief, we only share new things with you. We don't try and share everything that we already know is there. But in the uh, context of our live stream tonight, if you're not sure, you know, make sure you put that in the format of a question for us so we can tell you where to worry about it or not. Uh, another test taker uh, wanted to know if they're going to have to calculate standard deviation on the 65, 66, absolutely not. So, you know, that math, I've had many people say they didn't have to do one calculation. So mainly just recognizing the formula input or output. Now, tax-free tax equivalent yields come up and I've had several people tell me that they're not even asking them to do the math, they're just recognizing it. Okay, so that's our uh, brief and debrief. And if you want any uh, briefing from us about whether you should worry about something, you're welcome to put that into the chat and chat amongst yourselves if you'd like. If you are sending us a question so Brian and I can distinguish questions from chat, you know, people just, you know, talking to each other, please tell us the exam you're taking. So like SIEQ, or if it's a Series 7, for example, a Series 7 Q, and that helps us with a couple of things. It helps uh, Brian and I from wasting your valuable time by saying, okay, what test are you taking? Because on sometimes it is something that's important on a particular exam and others it's not so much. So just uh, if you could put that in the format also helps us on the debrief. Uh, my channel is the best free supplement to your paid study materials. And I have that organized in playlists. So you find your series, you know, series six, for example, or SIE. And then I have a buffet there for you. I have it in suggested watch order, but you certainly don't have to do that. Uh, the best paid supplement is Kaplan QBank and my friend, the test geek. You can find Brian at the uh, exam uh, test prep. What are you exam geek test prep? Uh, what is it? I don't know test why I can't geek. get that down. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, Kaplan, my discount code at uh, Kaplan is Guru10 at checkout. It's a discount code, works for all of Kaplan. And Brian's, uh, my 20% discount for Brian is Test Geek uh, for his products is Guru20. I don't receive any compensation on either of those discount codes, but uh, feel free. I think it's a good value to get a Kaplan QBank and the Test Geek. If you get the Test Geek, Brian's video class and his notes, that's 80 bucks with the discount somewhere around there. And the Kaplan QBank is about 60. So you're looking at 140. And I think that's a better value than a lot of uh, paid supplements that I've seen people be. It being. certainly is. Yeah. Um, if you have an explication request, uh, you can send that to us, social media, email, however you want to do it. Uh, here's my email request, or uh, email if you want to request it by email. Uh, I don't, I try and keep the channel clean. What I mean by that is you probably don't realize that, but it's kind of hard to keep that clean. What I mean by that is there's over 200 hours of content. I don't put a lot of videos on the channel. You will find unique content in the Facebook page, if that's your thing, not my thing, but there's a guru page there. And I post a lot of little 15 minute videos on question requests, things like that. Don't put that on the channel. If Facebook is not your thing, you can find extra content in our Reddit communities. Uh, there's a lot of videos there. If you go, for example, our R Series 7 video, I had a guy with one that had a question about combination. I don't put it in the search bar and literally four videos of me explicating combination questions came up. So I just do the videos there and I don't put them on the channel because otherwise there'd be like 400 videos with, you know, you know, all kinds of stuff. So you can find extra content there. 
Uh, we have our Series uh, 66 NASA community, same deal. We post videos there. It's an ongoing community. And we have our Series 24 for nines and tens. Those are our Reddit communities. Okay, so we're ready to look at our questions. Let me get rid of our banners. Do, 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 do. Boom, get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. And yeah, let's see what we got in the queue back there. There we go. Uh, sure, uh, Colin, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, anything you want to talk about? I've opened up the the live stream uh, to questions on nines, tens, and 24. So um, if you have any, a retest on Thursday, I just posted, I don't know how productive this is going to be, but I uh, posted, it was well received. Uh, people were watching my tips, tricks, and memory aids for Series 7. It's the most popular content uh, that we have uh, on on the channel. And they were watching it the night before or using it as audio when they tested. So I thought, well, gee, why don't we just go ahead and make a video like that? So I made a Series 7 in 60 minutes. And it's just to get you to the flow, get your circadian rhythm. It's not a teaching tool. I tell people to watch it either the day before or morning of. Anyways, long story short, so popular. We've done it now for the 6, the 63, the 65, the 66, and yesterday, the 24. So there's a 60-minute uh, Series 24 and 60-minute video that you can watch uh, that's new in the 24 playlist. So, God love you, Dean. I don't know how you can do any of that in 60 minutes. I, I, I'm with I, you. I, I keep going I, and going and going and going. I find, I, I find myself struggling to keep it within the 60 minutes. But, know. Uh, you know, so far, so good, right? So uh, same thing. You have any Series 10s uh, questions? We're open for 9s, 10s, 24s uh whatever uh strikes your fancy so you know uh i was gonna do a separate kind of live stream but i just thought that was too much so uh, i figure if we have some uh you know people who are just starting their journey and they want to uh join us they can you know they can join us for the the nine of the ten i'm noticing uh brian there we go we got some youtube people i wonder what's happening with the feed yeah, that's that's I think a practice test. Don't, don't wear yourself out. Uh, the 24 is something that people are always saying, wow, you know, a lot of situational questions. Uh, so I think that's a good idea. Um, it doesn't lend itself. What do you think, Brian? Does it lend itself to a data dump sheet? I don't really think so. Kaplan has the quick sheets. Uh, Brian, do you have your 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 class notes for that as well? Uh, I do have class notes for the 24. They're not sold separately. It's only with the video. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I, I'm thinking some of that reggae plus sometimes uh, can be a, a lends itself to a little chart. Uh, Rule 144 can lend itself to a little chart for the Series 24. That kind of stuff where that it's just that rote memorization. I wish there was more. I really wish there was. Yeah, more. I do too. Yeah. Um, you know, and then it, it, I don't know about your DP, Brian. I get a lot of uh, debrief coming back where it just seems like people are taking different versions of the 24. So what I mean by that you know, is I have some people that tell me it's just a bunch of memory and it's so much minutia. And then I have other people coming back and say, oh, it's completely judgment. Uh, you know, your I, I, I think we've heard that for 20 years, to be honest yeah. with you. What I tell people is they assume you know the rules and they ask you to apply them yeah. in situational questions. That's what the 24 has been a lot. Uh, yeah, along think... with about 20% overlap from the Series 7, which is a good thing. Yeah. I I, I really, you know, I, I it's one of the few, well, I shouldn't say that. I'm a big believer in exhausting the Quebec. Ah. So particularly on 24, you just got to ah, do so on 24, practice, yes. drill, and rehearse. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know if you follow us, Colin, on uh, the Reddit, but we have a Reddit R Series 24. It's for 9, 10s, and 24s. And if you are using the Kaplan Q Bank, uh, you can send me the QID. And again, I will explicate questions. I'll make a little video and explain for the upteenth time limit order protection. It's okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. But, you know, the, the stuff that I know people get hung up on. I'm more than happy to do that. And we do that in that format there. So uh, feel free to do that. Um, Speaking of which, I also have a little chart for ad, uh, retail communications versus institutional 
versus correspondence. I like that. I like that. that that's on every exam, every exam. So um, yeah, and especially the twenty four. Yeah. yeah, there's a carve out. So yeah, make sure, uh, Colin. You know that as a twenty four retail communication, you need to approve by a principal pre distribution. And if it's correspondence, you as a principal can. Uh, I always pretend it's me in the question. So pre or post distribution. So uh, make sure you got that down. I did in my 60 minutes go over institutional communication because institutional investors can protect themselves, their own assets, as I say. So it's mainly about protecting, you know, retail investors, Joe six packs. Right. I think the best that's on the best 65 data dump sheet I've seen is from my friend, the test geek. I'm not saying that just because he's here, uh, but he has a little chart that I've gone very fond of, which is surprising because uh, I'm not actually uh, that fond of many things, but, uh, Brian has a little, uh, what do you call that thing, Brian? Your little definition of person's cheat sheet. Yeah. He's got a little box. And what I do is on, uh, if I have, if you get, you don't have to, well, I guess shouldn't, I get, I, we don't, Brian and I aren't using our live streams as commercials for ourselves. But that being said, assuming you had the test geek information, he's got a little box. And what I do when I work with, work that with people, Brian, is I have them put their firm, in Brian's little box and then his they, themselves and whatever box they belong on. And then we go through it. And I think it's very, very helpful. So uh, I would suggest, uh, suggest that to you, perhaps. Brian's going to do doing a little more work. Let me get him the whole board there. Well, I, I wasn't going to go through the entire elaborate thing, but uh, it's also extremely relevant for the 66. And, uh, when you would be required to register and when you're not required to register. And I always tell people, cause you know, this is about 116 pages in the textbook and it's this, that, and the other exemptions, non-exempt, exempt, all that mess. So I just kind of flow charted it out and it makes it a lot easier and a lot simpler. And you start seeing these simple kind of criteria when they're required to register, when they're not. And that's basically, that's the definition of person's cheat sheet. Relevant for both the 65 and especially the 66, because there tends to be more questions on the stuff in the 66. Thank yeah, you. Do I lose my audio or are you still here? No, you're good. Okay. okay. Uh, I was uh, just going to say, yeah, that's the yeah, flow that's chart. So I just have people put that in their box there and, and go for it. Uh, stock splits, everybody has a little different. I wouldn't worry about special dividends, Eli. Uh, I would worry about stock splits. I do it. I don't know how you do it, Brian. I do, for example, if it's a three for two split, Eli, I do three divided by two times whatever the original position was. And that will give you the new position and then the, the value never changes. I would know there's no change in proportion ownership as in a stock split. And I would know that you end up with more shares at a lower price. So even if you can't do the math, that will give you a 50-50. Uh, I do cover that in videos. You, in the timestamp, you could you could find it. Uh, I don't go over special dividends because I just don't think it's a big deal. Uh, corporate actions, I go over a couple, couple of corporate actions. I go over treasury stock. You know, a treasury stock is acquired by the corporation either through open market purchases or through making a tender to the shareholders. I would definitely know that tender offers have to be open for 20 days. I would know you can't short into a tender. And if we change the uh, the terms, you got to leave it open for another 20 days. Uh, is it 10 or 20? I think it's 10. 10. 10. And it's then, 20 uh, and then 10. Yeah, right. and the target company has to tell you what they think you should do. Uh, I haven't had anybody on debrief. I know test prep vendors uh, go into the uh, result of splits on option contracts. I haven't had anybody tell me that was a big deal in the actual exam. But that being said, being said Eli, Knopman has a really good video. Uh, I think it's posted on the Reddit and you could put Notman in there and it'll come in. And I think it's either Brian Marks or uh, uh, Mevdev uh, doing a, a whole bunch of uh, that. That <laughs> So if that floats your boat, what do you think, Brian? In terms of well, that? as soon as he writes corporate actions, that term specifically is used on the SIE. Yeah. And it's about uh, a tender, um, a limited tender offer if you have at least 10,000 shares. I have a free video on my channel too. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that, Brian. Yeah. Brian take, 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 check out Brian's free stuff. We got to get him to do more free stuff on the YouTube. He's got some great stuff out there. So, uh, yeah, why don't you check that out too? I, I'm sorry, Brian. I didn't, uh, I forgot it's, the it's, it's, it's the stock split, and I, I do the same thing. It's great, a free great, video. Great. Awesome. There you go. Yep. 
Uh, I, I always recommend an exhibit for any bid and ask on the 24. I always suggest that people above the bid put market maker buys, customer sells. Always above the ask, market maker sells, customer buys. And then I call and tell them if it's a limit order, they go on the same side. So I recommend on the 24, any bid and ask question, making your own exhibit. You can watch me do that three or four times in the playlist. I have limit order protection there, which shows it to you. I have market making that shows it to you there. And it looks like uh, Brian's going to the dry race board. So let's give him some more real estate. This is uh, actually a little cheat sheet that I recommended for 24. If you hadn't took, taken your Series 7 in a while. Uh, again, because it cost, just like Dean said, absolutely. Watch his video on this, man. I'm telling you, customer buys at the ask, sells at the bid, and the market maker is exactly the opposite of that. And you do have to absolutely know that for the 24 to give yourself any chance. Uh, I would also recommend, just remind you that customers always pay the high price, always receives the low price. So I have another video called Know Your Bid From Your Ask. I got that title. Hey, hey. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. Well, I think, I think it's fair game on your nine. Uh, I can, Eli continually get people on the nine and the four telling me they, they, they are surprised how little, uh, sophisticated option strategies are tested and how much sales supervision is tested. So yeah, I think nine bid and ask would be fair game more likely 10 than nine, but remember options have bids and ask too. Right. So there would be a bid and an ask. And if like I'm doing a spread, I'd be, you know, the, the short leg would be the bid and the long leg would be the ask. So I don't know. What do you think? Probably low probability, Brian, on nine or high probability? Yes, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Low probability, nine, high probability on 10. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Taco Tuesday day, by the taco way. I hear Tuesday. National Taco, taco Day. Tuesday. Uh, watch a lot of you saying you bet any last minute suggestions, just confidence, right? I, I, I don't have a, uh, something for super nervous. If I had a pill, I'd be rich, right? Take this pill. You no longer be super nervous. There's a fine okay. balance between, you know, uh, being fearful in a good way that moves you in a good direction and not being positive. So, you know, uh, my last minute suggestions as, uh, just gather yourself and, uh, make sure you get, you can't, uh, uh, underestimate getting a good night's sleep. It's a giant reading test. I don't know about you when I'm tired, my reading skills diminished. So make sure you get a good, good rest. Uh, I fair, I have a couple popular videos for, you know, people go the night before morning of uh, series seven and 60 minutes tips, tricks, and memory aids is very popular. Uh, what's another one. I got one more that's pretty popular for series sevens uh, the day before or morning of, but don't wear yourself out. I mean, you really, you got to fold up your study effort and just say, okay, I'm going with what I got. I have a guy, I'm so happy he passed. And uh, I told him, you know, let's all talk to you again if you need to. But, you know, I don't really want to because it could be, you know, Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. And what you really need to be worrying about is getting on your game face and getting a good night's rest. And uh, good news, he passed. And uh, he was anxious, too. I was, By the way, when he passed, I told him I was more anxious about that for him and his uh, knowledge base. So, you know, um, try try do whatever you can to calm down and own you know, let the test come to you. As uh, Brian says, take the test. Don't let the test take you. Uh, so confidence, confidence for some points. So work on getting some confidence. But by the way, Farad, just so you know, ugh, I have haters. So I told somebody that I'm trying to be a force for good. And then, you know, my haters all over the place. Like you told them they don't have confidence. Oh, how could he do that? <laughs> so uh, I'm telling you that if you can be more confident, that would be helpful. That would be helpful. And then I'm and again, I, if I had a pill for that, I'd be rich. 66 in four weeks, that's plenty of time. Uh, you don't have any time com to constraint there. DJ, no problem. Yeah, I think that's plenty of time. So. You got it. No problem. That might almost be too much time. If you're feeling comfortable and you're doing a practice exam, maybe, you know, go down there. I love it, Stephen. Where are the team? We are on your team. That's what I love about our live streams. It's a team, it's a community. Oh, again, Brian, my haters said, how come Dean always uses we and R and it's just him? 
I go, <laughs> no, it's not. It's no, we. It's, it's, it's our. We and us. <laughs> it's yes. not just me. There's a community. <laughs> exactly. It's the community. Anyways. So thanks, Stephen, for having us on your team. Steve, Stephen, I'm proud to be on your team. I'm sure Brian is. Uh, I felt prepared, but I'm not testing too well. Uh, Kaplan is tougher. Kaplan is tougher. So Brian Stephen has been kind enough to let us explicate his practice finals on our channel. And they have a very strong correlation to the actual exam. So what you might want to do, Stephen, is go to the uh, playlist for 66 on the YouTube channel. Are you coming from the YouTube channel? It looks like you are. And uh, do Brian's uh, final. Hit pause, answer, hit play. And then, you know, I'll answer it and I'll talk about it. And then you can get a score. And that score strongly reflects uh, what we can expect on your actual exam. So maybe save that. Well, I guess we're not time to save you going Friday. Better do that maybe tomorrow or Thursday. And I bet you're going to do a little better than Kaplan because Kaplan's got some gotcha questions. And Brian, you may think it's a gotcha question, but he doesn't have gotcha questions. The questions are are legit. So I, every once in a while, somebody call me and say, oh, I'm Brian. Now. I had a, a person call me from their study group. And she saw almost verbatim a question from Brian on 66, by the way, from his practice exam. And they, in the study group, when they were doing it together, I hope they paid Brian. I, I have visions that they're not paying my friend Brian. But anyways, uh, they were all saying what a kind of obtuse question it was from Brian. And she said she saw it almost verbatim. So I would suggest that. And uh, Stephen, if you want the PDF, I, I suggest the PDF, if you don't buy his full blend stores, because you don't have a, you know, a whole bunch of time to watch Brian's full video course but you can get that for like 16 bucks. And then what I tell people to do is print it and turn it into what I call poor man's flashcards. Then take your Marco and just take Brian's questions and Marco the wrong answers and just read the question and the right answer, maybe the night of or morning of the exam and the rationales. I think you can pick up some points that way. So that would be uh, my thing, mental prep. Yeah, you gotta get a good night's sleep. Again, for all these exams, particularly NAS exams, you've got to be well rested because you gotta, you gotta be on top of your reading skills. Right. RTFQ, RTFA. They're not trying to trick you, but they are complicated reading. It's not, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, not easy reading for sure. Oh, thanks for Trump coming in as a victorious test taker. We love that. We love it. It's one of our all time thing, uh, things to do. So thanks for joining us. If uh, I'm Olga, if you have any, if you're a Series 7, got the P. If you're a uh, Series 7, you got any questions for Olga, maybe she'll hang out for a couple minutes in the stream. Uh, the chat and you can ask her, uh, you know, sometimes when Brian and I tell you it's not on the test or is on the test, you have to take our word for it. But uh, Olga, for example, maybe you can confirm you didn't see anything on reading the tape. You know, uh, yeah. I think we had a Victoria 66 test taker. Maybe they can put in the chat where they had to do standard deviation. I don't think so. So, you know, uh, thanks for uh, circling back with us. I, I always say, Olga, <laughs> I come into your life for a reason and a season. The reason is to pass your exam. So it looks like our season's still here. And the season is how long it takes you to do that. So I'd imagine, Olga, you're with us again for the next leg, which is going to be your 63 or your 66. Uh, and then, unfortunately, I lose subscribers who send me nice notes saying, Dean, thank you so much. I just want to let you know I'm unsubscribing. And I say, well, there's going to be losing subscribers. That's the way to do it. Uh, I posted on the community page, and I, it was kind of fun because a lot of people were showing me some love saying, Oh, even though I passed, I'm going to stick around. <laughs> so you, you don't have to leave. You don't have to leave. But uh, you know. uh, so anyways, we'll see you for your the rest of it. Yeah, all options com communications have to be pre-approved. Uh, Brian, do you think on the 24th, they'll get into an option worksheet for covered calls or anything like that? Probably not, huh? No, not that uh, I've heard. Yeah, all the real Oh, and I would add into that CMOs. CMOs, I'd add into that mutual fund ranking done by the fund sponsor. Yep. Uh, first year firm, certainly. Yep. So uh, CMOs, because CMOs are derivatives. So options, CMOs, uh, uh, a mutual fund ranking, not from a third party, I think. And first year firm, I think that's all the pre. Am I missing anything there, Brian, on the pre? -pro? I don't think. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, so I would. I don't like the word pre-approved. Just, just me. I would, I would prefer we say file 10 days prior to first juice with FINRA. I just don't like this idea that, by the, by the way, the principal, though, does need to approve that before we start distributing it. So maybe that's what you meant. Uh, but make sure you got that down. And then remember, uh, FINRA can put you back for everything on a 10-day. If you violate, for established firm, it's 10-day, another advertisements, it's 10 days after first juice. 
uh, and they can put you back on the pre-file if you, you know, you get too carried away. Uh, I would know that recruitment advertising is the only advertising we can do blind without clearly and prominently disclosing the name of the broker dealer. Um, I think that's the high risk ones. Hassan has test geek. All right. He's got test geek. So there you go, Hassan. So uh, that test, uh, Brian's, uh, I think has the highest correlation uh, to the actual exam of any of the practice exams I've seen out there. And uh, Kaplan's a little tougher. And then I get into it sometimes with people who want me to say, you know, bad things about other vendors. I don't. But, you know, some vendors I'm not familiar enough to know if there's correlation or not. I'm not comfortable to tell them to go take this exam and then we'll know where you're at. Uh, by the way, the guy who did pass, I was so proud of him. He did on Friday uh, Brian's Test Geek Series 7 and he got a 67. I said, well, my friend, good news. This isn't today. This isn't the real test, but that's a sign you're still at risk. So what are we going to do between now and Monday? Because we need to find some points. And I was proud of him. He didn't go wobbling and he found the points and he passed. So Nice. Excellent. Uh, tomorrow. All right. Mike, we're sending you good test vibes. All right. You've been silently following her along through all your content. Oh, well, thank you. I love referrals. I love referrals. We just crossed over, Michael, 800,000 views. Uh, we had a weekly, I don't think I told you this, Brian, we had a record, I want to say Friday or Saturday, we had 10,000 views. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. And we're running like 800 subscribers uh, uh, a month. So, Michael, on that, that's, that is referrals. And my 24s, my 9s, my 10s, I'm trying to put more out there for you. The numbers are, in terms of view count and subscribers aren't there. But I know that a big part of the growth of the YouTube channel has been referrals from successful test takers and, uh, you know, and uh, principals referring their folks to the channel. So I always love that. Uh, again, I had somebody who said that uh, I'm more concerned with my brand and my channel than people passing their tests. And I said, well, I think you're a little confused. That is my brand, providing free supplements that help people pass their tests. That's the, the most important thing is that people pass their tests. Uh, my brother sent us something. <laughs> Chris, Chris is my brother. Uh, thanks, Chris. So back in the day when Chris came to work for me, this is decades ago. In those days, the material was in a loose leaf binder. And Chris started asking me the waiting on the exam. And if I told him the waiting, he would take out entire chapters and throw them in the trash. And those days, the pass rate uh, was a six hour exam. And the pass was 70. And he said, Dean, is this 70% of the material? I said, well, yeah. He said, I'm just going to learn this with 100% accuracy. And oh my goodness, he shrunk the binder from, and he passed. I want to write Fenner and tell him there's entire things he was clueless about. Uh, you know, product knowledge comes from sales efforts, not taking the test. So, you know, all you want, this is a barrier to entry. So just get past it. So uh, I used to really slam people. You got to know it all with 100% accuracy. But uh, due to my brother, I don't do that anymore. I say, listen, you, you got to understand the weighting. For example, I had somebody who missed the mark and they didn't understand that function three is 91 questions on the series seven. And so they had they did poorly in one and four, but that's nine questions, 12 questions. That's not what did them in. It was, you know, poor performance. It looks like fun function three was their best function, but they still left 30, 40 uh, performance opportunities there. So make sure you pay attention to waiting. I recommend you print the PDF of the test specifications for NASA or the content outline from FINRA and have that as a guide while you're studying. So you can pay attention to content and waiting as you study. Uh, not uh, not to push my material, but all yeah. of my quick notes have the NASA uh, content outline for both there the 65 go. and the 66. There you go. So you can go ahead and uh, if you want to do that, uh, you can you know certainly do that. Well, let's see. I'm just seeing why that won't let us. Put the thing I want to put there. Oh, well. Uh, where can you see it on the flow chart? It's on your module. So, Brian, I think Vidya is asking about where, where you can, that chart you put on your dry erase board in your content. Where is that? Uh, it's on the quick notes. Yeah, it's okay, Eli. It's a, it's a work in progress. I know that people, you know, I'm hoping someday, but don't let it get in the way. If people will tell me that it's S9, it's more helpful. I knew that already, Eli. So, but don't let that discourage you from putting questions up. It's just I'm trying to get, you know, if you've been with me a while, I'm trying to get this thing more, a little more organized in a, not in a way that's constraining. We still want to be free form and freewheeling, but just in a way that is uh, a little more organized for replays on people who are doing replays and things like that. 
There you go. Quick, quick note. So Son knows where it's at. All right, Saturday. I love it. I love it. Dean and Brian, regarding arbitration, is a full panel, public panel provided? No, I don't think it's a public panel. I think it's two, uh, two in industry and one public. But it could. I think it could be all industry. Do you know, Brian? Yeah, if it's uh, involving a registered rep. Yeah. Uh, which sounds like it's not involving a public customer is what that sounds like to me. Yeah. So it wouldn't well, I don't know. The, the registered rep, I don't know, Cameron, if you mean registered rep to registered rep or registered rep to broker dealer. If right. the customer's on the other side, it's the customer who can, you know, ask for a full public panel. And that wouldn't be dependent on whether there's a rep on the other side. So you're going to be stuck. With How that. much of that is tested anymore, Dean? Uh, I think you should know that arbitration is not for nine tens, 24s, that uh, arbitration isn't binding on your employees, your registered reps for HR issues. I think of it as HR issues, sexual harassment, age discrimination, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, I would know definitely the statute of limitations is six years. Uh, I would definitely know the payment for five in arbitration proceedings is due in 30 days. Uh, yeah, I think maybe one or two questions, Brian. For I'm seven not, or yeah. 24. Nine, yeah, 10. I think a couple, couple. Yeah, like yeah, couple. more so nine, ten, twenty-four. Then I just don't hear them much on the seven anymore. Yeah, uh, that's a big, big category. So, you know, as broker dealers, first again, Mr. I'm not sure which exam you're taking. It doesn't matter for what I'm about to say. We always disclose capacity. So I say, Mr. When you are uh, open an account with me here at Merrill Lynch. We are a broker dealer. And in some transactions, we're going to be acting in our broker agents and capacity on your behalf, getting the security elsewhere. Other transactions you do with us, we'll be doing acting in our dealer principal capacity. We'll be charging you a markup or a markdown. In each and every transaction you do with us, we will disclose capacity. It'll be on your confirmation and we will never be a broker and a dealer in the same trade. So, you know, that's one way uh, to think about it. Now, depending on your exam, you know, you're going to get tested on the definition of a broker dealer, you know, somebody who does transactions from this for themselves and customers. And then what's not a broker dealer, even though it sounds like a broker dealer, perhaps like a trust company of a bank, something like that. So in terms of how much in the weeds you're going to get on that, it depends on your actual exam. Looks like Brian's got a nice little picture there. So let's give uh, Brian some real estate. There you go. So transactions for the benefits of others or themselves. So if they go out to the secondary market to do the transaction, it's an agency transaction. If it's bought or sold from their own inventory, it's a principal transaction. One or the other. Yeah. They charge commissions here and markups here. And what I like to tell people is or markdowns, forget, markups or markdowns. Right. Don't forget your A, B, C. C. Yeah. A, B, C is the way to do it. Yeah, I like that too. That's a nice little memory aid. Yeah. Um, again, I would just tell you that if you're taking a 65 or a 66, uh, I think they get a little more in the weeds about this thing, about investment advisors who may have broker dealer affiliates, that kind of thing. Uh, pretty straightforward, I think, on on SIE and on uh, six and seven you're or right. seven. You, you know, and again, it ties into our question earlier about bid and ask and, and when acting as a principal. So, um, I don't think anymore. Has that changed, Ray? Uh, uh, Brian, hasn't that changed? It uh, changed 2019, I believe. It is no longer considered part of adjusted gross income. So there you go. Nor there is it deductible. Yeah, it takes it takes ever an asset to, uh, to catch up. What they do typically is remove those kind of questions. That's right. Until we you know some future date. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, Farah. Uh, what should you not overdo? I think quantitative analysis, personally. What do you think, Brian? Formulas. Don't yeah, I think, overdose I think, from formulas. This is going to sound weird, but I think there's a lot of people who miss the mark on the 65 and 66 because they get they go down the rabbit hole of quantitative analysis, trying to figure out how to do present value and future value and internal rates of return and capital asset pricing model and standard deviation. You know, that's that the whole category includes balance sheets, maybe two, three questions. And I do think you can overdose 
I'll call it analytical methods, quantitative analysis would be Perfect. what I'd say. Brian, is that yeah. the same page? Absolutely. On there? Absolutely. So. There's almost no math in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people, uh, I, I don't know if it's test prep vendors that feed this because yes. they do, they have questions where I told you, you know, again, you're welcome on social media or email, but God forbid, just because some test prep vendor asks you to calculate standard deviation, you know, reach out and say, do I really need to do this now? You know, who, maybe your employer wants you to do it. I don't know, but you know, it's certainly not going to be jeopardizing. Woohoo. Uh, yeah. I'm going to get some more tight nine, 10, 24 content. Brian and I are talking about doing a collaborating on a 24 thing here soon. Uh, you know, nine tens, 24s where we decided to kind of do our, our major collaboration and maybe SIE, I think, I don't know if that's still in the mix, but we just haven't had time to sit down and have an adult beverage or two and figure out how we're going to make that work. But, uh, but since Brian's involved, I hate to break it to you. It's probably going to cost some money. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, that's, I'm, uh, I'm not going to go there. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I, he's probably going to say, well, Dean, you get paid all those ad, ad revenue from uh, YouTube. No, that's not what I was going to say. But that's, yeah. uh, let's see. Series 10. Uh, I think uh, Kaplan's good on the 910. Uh, STC is good on the 910. Um, I think pass perfect and all that goes in the weeds too much. So I'm just not a pass perfect fan. Dean, uh, you're calling us. We need to do 91024. Yeah, I think so. I think Brian and I, 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 I think we need to do it I, Brian and I both a little bit of hubris, but I think it's you know justified. We we do think we could do a better job than what we see out there uh in terms of nine, ten, twenty-four. So uh but I I don't think I don't think it's a mistake. I mean, obviously I'm a Kaplan guy. Uh I'm agnostic about whether you choose Kaplan or not in terms of helping you. Uh, but it's easier to help you if you have Kaplan study materials content. Uh, but uh, STC is a fine choice. Um, Solomon Jer Jeremy just sold to to uh, Pass Perfect's parent kind of company. I'm not familiar enough to. I like Jeremy. I like Solomon, but I just never seen any of their nine ten content, so I wouldn't know. So that's not a pop plus or minus. Who's else is out there? Um, I'm not a big fan of test training consultants or exam FX on on any of the exams. So. Yeah, Chris passed. Chris, well, you know, we're both older now than we were when we started our broker dealer. But Chris, I think, was one of the youngest person ever to take and pass the, the exams when we were doing that. There you go. There you go. So Olga said she got a question about a hedge fund. So hedge funds are organized as private. There's partners. that 2 and 20 again, Dean. Yeah, 2 and 20. So you had to calculate total fees paid based on the principal amount given and the income they generated. So it's going to be 2% of the assets under management. So 2% of that principal and then 20% of whatever that, uh, I don't know about income generated. I would prefer we call that profit or, you know, but if they, you got to deal with what they say. So, uh, so yeah, that's the second time we've heard that Olga. So we heard that from somebody else as well. Yeah. So, that you're yeah. right. Dean. that, that term income kind of worries me a little bit because yeah. performance based has to be based on net gains, yeah. gains versus yeah. losses. So that yeah, some, some, some kind of yeah. yeah, some funds close up when they can't get back to their high quarter mark. So um, <laughs> the guy who owns the New York Mets is a hedge fund guy. I always joke with Stevie Cohen. His hedge fund Olga is called Point Seventy Two, and he charges three and thirty. I just got wow. Way. That's how he can buy the New York Mets. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, I would start. I don't know. Uh, would you start, Brian, with a with reading or taking a final to see where he's at, he or she? Uh, again, yeah. <clears throat> Depends on the material. I would use the exam score sheet first to find out what areas, what content areas were the lowest. Okay. That's where I go, and I'd probably bet it's investment vehicles eight out of ten times. The investment vehicle section is the lowest. So who was that? Before on? I just want to scroll back in the comments. So whoever it was that was asking us what they could overdose on, let's talk about underdose. I'm so with Brian on that. So what people overdose on 67, 66 is quantitative analysis. And then I think there's a little hubris on 66. Same thing on 65, but it does come from hubris because they didn't take a seven. But I do think there's 66s who take a seven and say, oh, what can they ask me about investment vehicles? I don't know. That's right. And then they go down there and it's a little more in the weeds on some of the stuff. And they end up missing the mark. So I'm with Brian on that. Now, if you're 65, I'd tell you the same thing. 
I think you need to spend more time laying base on economics and investment vehicles than trying to learn how to do quantitative analysis. So right. absolutely. Uh, I could do a quick list on the investment vehicles that yeah, let's I do it. Let's do it. struggle I with. I think we got time, Brian. Let's let's do it. So let me it's give you the derivatives, time. alternatives. That's the hedge funds, limited partnerships, and REITs, and the discounted cash flow. There's got to be three or four DCF questions on the Series 66, and it's part of the investment vehicle section. So again, derivatives, alternatives, and DCF, discounted cash flow. Uh, also, because it's not on the Series 7, some life insurance stuff. Yeah. These are things that are not covered on the 7, which a lot of people would therefore struggle with on the 66. I so, so concur with that. So, you know, just, you know, pay attention to that, that part of it. I mean, that's, that's, right. that's, woo I, I saw a lot of Brian stuff. I hope. Yeah. Right. right. I think it's funny, Brian, because, you know, that discount code is out there, but uh, you know, uh, some of our friends, uh, good news for you. They want their people to pay full price to you. So they don't, they don't let them know that they, they could use the discount code. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I'm more than happy to give the discount code to anybody. It doesn't matter. To me. <laughs> oh, I thought I was special. <laughs> you are special. Uh, I hate those. I mean, those those near those near misses are just no. I, I, yeah, I would focus on your weak categories, but make sure you don't while you're doing that because every draw can be different. And so sometimes people just focus on their weak areas and they get a different draw. So you want to make sure you bring you don't go backwards on the stuff you did okay. So make sure you review it all, but with a special emphasis on the stuff that you struggle with. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, again, you know, it, I love it when people who take the test come back and visit us because, you know, if Ryan and I did mislead you, there'd be pe people here saying, you know, you told me it wasn't there and it was, so, you know, so. Well, NASDAQ, all, all over the counter transaction, NASDAQ stands for National that's Association. That's over the counter. Yeah, that's over the counter. That's always acting at a principle. So all, all over the counter transactions are done as a, at least one party to the transaction is a principal or dealer. And there's going to be a bid and ask. And remember, there are non-NASDAQ OTC stocks as well. So if it's Robinhood, I'll just use Robinhood. Robinhood is a broker dealer, but it never acts in its dealer capacity. Robinhood is a broker, and on its client's behalf, it does trades through Citadel. Citadel is the market maker for Robinhood. It's their preference market maker. So, MR, in that situation, if you're a Robinhood customer, you would be paying a markup not to Robinhood, but to the market maker that is doing the trades for the Robinhood customers. People eat PS, you're not a customer of the market making firm, you're a customer of Robinhood. Now, they get paid for the order flow, and so they're not going to charge you a commission. However, on the test, we would assume that Robinhood is getting a commission for that transaction. May I add something to that, Dean? Sure, of course, of course. Because if I'm trying to read between the lines of this question, they seem to think that NASDAQ is an actual market, per se. It's not. When it's, when it's only a quotation service for the over-the-counter market. Yeah, it's MR, I think of it and NYSE. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell a story. Some people don't like my stories. I told a guy today on the channel, doesn't like my stories, find a new channel because that's who I am. 60 years old, I ain't going to be somebody new tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, MR, if you ever come to San Francisco, one of my favorite places on the corner of Jackson and Montgomery, and if you look at this uh, brick building, it says William Tecumseh Sherman was yeah. a market maker here. Yeah. Before the Civil War, there's no electronics, there's no telephones. And you would go into his firm and over the counter would be a chalkboard. And on that chalkboard, he would post his quotes, a bid and an ask for that particular security. Now, good news for you. We're all in the financial district. That makes it easy for you to check the other chalkboards to see what the other prices are. And then you can negotiate. You don't have to pay the bid or the ask, kind of like a car dealer. You can say, hey, and in those days, you'd literally give him the money. He'd give you the security over the counter. Or you give him the security, he gives you the money over the counter. That's why they're called over the counters. Now, I think of NASDAQ MR as a giant electronic chalkboard. And so on this electronic chalkboard, we're showing all the quotes and you can determine from that, you know, I like eBay, but eBay is a one-sided market. They're just sellers. Wouldn't it be more fun if they were also buyers? I could come up there and say, I'm willing to buy this for this price. And you can see the spread. 
So all that, all debt securities trade over the counter, not all stocks. So Brian's point, right? The New York Stock Exchange is a physical location. And again, in 1792, there's no electronics, no telephone. So it makes sense to meet every day between 9.30 and 4 o'clock and match buyers with sellers. Uh, I'm telling you, Dean, I, I've told that William Tecumseh Sherman story so many times <laughs> as well. It's amazing. Uh, I'm a history buff, you know. It's a, I am too, yeah. Yeah, wishing you luck. We'll be with you in spirit. Scott, circle back Tuesday. Let us know. The next day, you'll be uh, able to tell us the good news. You're testing victory. So uh, I think 73, I don't know who your test prep vendor is, but I feel good with the 73. So uh, assuming you're using uh, you know, uh, a test prep vendor, you should be fine. Thinking about the P for you. Underdose on the seven. I'm not sure about underdose on the seven. I think fun I would call it function three, which is the investment vehicles. So function three, which is mutual funds, options, muni bonds. You look like you want to add something, Brian. I was thinking one of the greatest things Dean Tinney has ever said, suitability is about investment, knowing your investment vehicles. It's the uh, knowledge yeah. of the products that determines suitability. So if you overdose or underdose, that's what it is. You have to understand the products and the suitability of those products. That's so, important. On the I really believe that. So you can't do you can't do suitability if you don't know the products. That's 91 questions on the product, but it bleeds into suitability. So people say suitability and people are running around thinking there's 90 questions on suitability. No, there's there's data gathering, which is function two. You are opening the account saying, hey, Brian, for me yeah. to do a really good job for you over time, I need to know a lot about you. I'd like to read you a list of investment objectives, like you'd rate them on a scale of one to 10. Yeah. You know, I say safety of principle, Brian says 10, liquidity 10, and recognizing that I then don't recommend a partnership or options. So you can't do that unless you know partnerships are not liquid. You can't do that if you don't know options, you know, are speculative. So you've got to know, you got to own the investment vehicles before you can have any chance of getting the suitability questions. Like Chris, exactly thanks. Chris right. said calculator three times. Uh, people do get surprised on the insurance. There's um, the insurance. That's what yeah. I said. That was one of my lists. Uh, you're going to definitely get equity indexed annuities and there's no negative yeah. reset. Uh, I've been hearing questions about viaticals where, you know, you can cash out your life insurance before you die, stuff like that. Brian, can you talk about DCF? He's excellent at talking about DCF. Uh, yeah, uh, in, <laughs> in two minutes or less. Yeah, tough. tough. I'm with you. Uh, I would, by the way, I, Rayla, I would just add that this is going to be about bonds, anything with a set of income streams. So that's right. And so predominantly it's about bonds. Yeah. And that means the nominal rate or coupon, the principal, and the maturity, because that determines how many income payments we get. For the equity, it's the dividend uh, discount model, because that's the only income from stocks is the dividend. And if it's preferred, that's what it's going to be because there's going to be no change. That's in the right. And there's this more obscure one called the dividend growth model. Uh, for the 65, they're fairly basic. They don't go much deeper than this. Uh, and again, the whole purpose is trying to find a fair price for a security based on future income. Love it. Love it. How's Brian's that? so good at Is that less than two minutes. No, I like it. I like it. You're excellent. You're excellent. At that. <laughs> hey, Josh, did you find that useful? Uh, I hope you found that useful. So Josh did Brian, my, my 65 and 60 minutes. <laughs> so, um, I'm hoping it's a force for good. I, people who've been using them like them. So, you know, uh, we'll continue on, uh, that, and hey, kudos on the past, Josh, kudos on the past. I think you're probably done. I, I would guess that's the last leg of your testing journey. So uh, kudos, kudos. You got the, now you can put those registrations to work. Nine months. Wow. So like we said, your season, the reason of the season, nine uh, months. So, and then you gave birth. Thinking about it. Yeah. The, then he gave birth to being fully registered. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> uh. Uh, I think, Jaro, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, just let me know. But, uh, well, I don't know if you can let me know in chat with Oxans or something. But anyways, uh, yeah, I think I have the most complete SIE playlist out there. There's 
If anything, there's probably too much. I think I got 45 videos. There's three practice finals, including Brian's. There's the explication. I, I, I hope that all my playlists will someday resemble my SIE playlist. That thing is, I'm going to put up some uh, option practice questions for the SIE. I'm hoping tomorrow, but by the end of the week. I'm teaching the SIE next week, and I always use whatever I'm teaching as an excuse to, you know, make some content. Who has tips? Um, uh, I don't know. I would go through my SIE in 60 minutes. I have an explication on function three, which is 33 questions or function two, but maybe that. Brian, we got any SIE tips? Uh, well, I got the SIE video, but. There you go. He's going Saturday, though. Can you watch all your yeah. videos? From yeah, it's about 12 hours. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. I, that might be a little too late for, for the test geek. but Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But you can. Again, I always recommend this. You can go to his practice final, right? It's on the channel, and then you can get the PDF for about $16 yeah. or his little quick notes, which I think are helpful. I think that comes in at like 36 bucks. That's definitely something worthwhile. Yeah, I think, yeah, my SIE, I'm pretty proud of it, Nicole. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. So I have a lot of people who use that as their primary study uh, thing, and then their 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 primary is their supplement. So, yeah, function three, I think, is the one I, I'm thinking uh, that's where I would spend my time. Yeah, so the next leg, Nicole, is it a Series 7 or Series 6? What's the next leg in your testing journey? Is it a 6 or a 7? Yeah, I think the cap the thing that I think distinguishes Kaplan. So I think Kaplan's good on everything. I had to stand up for Kaplan the other day. Listen, in social media on the Reddits and on my channels, I said I'm agnostic. I'm not, you know, if I if you use Pass Perfect or STC, you're welcome to, you know, get help on our social media. But uh, Brian, the other day they were really slamming, you know, Kaplan. I I intervened and said, well, listen, guys, just before you get too carried away. As a moderator, I just want to let you know that if I didn't think Kaplan was the best, I wouldn't be teaching for them. So let's lighten up a little bit, you know. <laughs> but I think what makes that Kaplan, uh, I think one of the most competitive parts of Kaplan is the Kaplan QBank. Uh, it is the best QBank in terms of reflecting the actual exam and being able to customize it and be able to do your trackers and find all that stuff. So I think besides I am not I, affiliated with Kaplan, and I believe it is the number one QBank platform on the planet. Yeah, that's why I always recommend. So I'm always recommending as a supplement. Uh, I know there's other people making different recommendations. I always recommend Test Geek and Kaplan QBank. If I'm gonna, if I'm a person using STC or Kaplan, or if I have Kaplan, I got the QBank. But if I'm using STC or I'm using Pass Perfect or Training Consultants, and I'm looking to invest in a supplement or supplements. It would be a Kaplan Q Bank and a, a Test Geek uh, video course. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. I agree. All done. Woohoo. Nine months. I hope you had a nice victory dinner or something. I hope you celebrated. I see a picture there with a uh, young man. I'm hoping, you know, he gets his uh, dad back, I'm guessing, and, you know, can do some family, spend some family time. Hi, Hysteria Drew. We, uh, I think we've all agreed the investment vehicles. For 65 investment vehicles. Remember, there's a little economics in there that is not in the 66. So uh, I would say investment vehicles. Uh, the one with the most questions are client recommendations, laws, and regs. Yeah. But people struggle mostly with investment vehicles. Yeah, and ethics. Care. Ethics, don't lie, cheat, or steal is huge, too. Yeah. 66 after that. So seven and 66. She's, that's pretty typical. Uh, for most of the people uh, are doing, that seems to be the most common journey, SIE 766. And we do have people taking SIE 763, and then we have people taking SIE 663, 65. So those are the common journeys. Yeah, there's only three or four. So, you know, if you tell me you missed the SIE because of options, I'm not going to believe you. It's you know, I'm going to say, well, what else did you have a problem with? But I would lay the groundwork because if you are coming for a seven, the groundwork you lay, the base you lay on the SIE will be helpful on the seventh. On Monday, woohoo! We'll be sending good test five. Same thing, Nicole. Come back Tuesday and share your testing victory with us. Antigone, oh, I love that. Is that uh, I like that? I haven't seen an Antigone in a long, long time. 
uh, a famous Greek character. Anyways, yeah, why, why haven't you taken a practice test? You need to take a practice test. You need to get, <laughs> get a score on practice test. So I'm kind of yeah, a Yeah, absolutely. So what is this? Kaplan Kubank simulated exam. Got yeah, it. do one. Do one, get a score. because You got to know whether you need remediation or not. Right. And if you don't do a practice test, you won't know if you need remediation. If you wait too long, you won't have time to do it. So you got to embrace that perhaps it's negative feedback, but you need it, right? So uh, I told you the guy who uh, I was so proud of because he didn't get wobbly. He stayed dedicated, disciplined, and organized over the weekend. He didn't lose touch. He didn't disappear You know, because we're talking back and forth. Um, but in his case, you know, he didn't, he, I had to convince him to take Brian's practice final and we, it wasn't good news. He got a 67 on Friday. I said, and had that been the real test, you would have failed. Good news. It's not the real test. So we need to find a few more points between now and Monday. I'm sure we can do it. But if you wait too long, like I say, you know, if you, if he waited till Saturday or Sunday, there'd be no time for remediation. So you got to embrace that. So I would just say it's not I'm taking any, giving a little bit of a hard time, but if you're, if you're testing next Tuesday, you still got a week. So in no circumstance, but I let Thursday go by and you haven't done a practice test. Correct. You got a score. Dean, if I may interrupt for a sure, second, the next time you and I go out for a, a libation, yeah. could you please tell me the history behind Antiguini? I need to. Okay. Know. Yeah, I sure will. I sure will. <laughs> I'm not as well versed on the like Greek mythology. I'm who, not sure if that's the play on the, you know, who knows? Her name could come from, I'm imagining gender. I'm assuming uh, a gender that may not be correct. But. Well, there you go, Josh. That's uh, our fame, our favorite providers for sure. <laughs> oh. Pass perfect. Yeah, I'm with you. Pass perfect. Well, once again, I've got to tell you, that score is not going to be reflective. So it might be really low compared to the actual exam. You're going to pick up points. But once again, I would just trust you. Good news. On the channel, there are uh, three practice final. Well, let's call it two. Brian's, and I also take a Kaplan final. And so on both those finals, you can, if you want to get another kind of correlation with your past perfect, more dots in the pattern to connect, do those hit pause, hit play, strong correlation on Brian and strong correlation on Kaplan. Kaplan isn't as difficult as past perfect, but it's tougher. So you'll pick up points. You won't pick up points from Brian unless you work from there. I mean, the score you get on Brian is the score. I mean, it's, it's real. So as I told you, that guy got a 67. And I told him, hey, 67 is a 67. So, uh, so. That's one solution. And I feel like I'm pushing Brian's little PDF for 16 bucks. I don't want to mislead you because I've had people who buy that and call me and say, it's just a PDF of what I saw on the channel. Yes. I think I've made that very clear. That's what it is. But uh, if you want, you can you know, give them 16 bucks. It's 20, but with 20% discount and get a PDF. And I told you what I like to do with that Antigone is uh, have people print it and then use it as poor man's flashcards where they all Marco out Brian's wrong answers and just read his question and his right answer night of or morning of or both before they test. Yeah, the Kaplan QBank is designed to be tougher. So that is by design, Nicole, but it's not its not as bad as past perfect. So <laughs> Chuck and I was talking to Brian, uh, uh, you know, backstage about Chuck and uh, Bill, Bill James and Chuck Lowenstein are subject matter experts at Kaplan. And I used to give them all kinds of grief about the QBank and how I think some questions are not legit. But I don't do it anymore because now that I'm helping third parties using other vendors, I'm like, okay, listen, I got to, you know, ours is the best. I say ours collectively, uh, Kaplan. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I think Kaplan and Dean and Brian, I think you're set. And remember, we're, we're both Brian and I are bridges to your actual exam, but it's it's not a transaction. It's a relationship. So I, I think some people uh, misconstrue Brian's video courses sometimes and just think he's like the Wizard of Oz and there's no real test geek. As you can see, there is a real living, breathing test geek. He's right there on the whiteboard. And he's not opposed if you, I don't defend his questions. Sometimes people call me with a, you know, bitching about one of Brian's questions. I go, why don't you just call Brian and bitch to him? Because I don't want to hear it. I'm joking. <laughs> but but uh, he's more than happy to talk to people. Please do. Yeah. Yeah. Now, by the way, Brian does tutor. He's 90 bucks an hour, which is extremely cheap. The key Sometimes. to what you just said, Dean, is you and I are a bridge. Yeah. It starts with your content, whatever textbook provider you start with. That's what lays the foundation. Dean and I are the bridge. 
whether it's free content or you pay for my videos that we don't really care about that no. we care about constructing that bridge that's, what we're about. that's exactly right that's right we are simpatico yes all right Always looks like we're coming to the close of our hour hey i love it so there's another series seven and 60 minutes ryan <laughs> i find i just john i'm laughing because i i thought am i gonna do this <laughs> and, uh, Brian, where this comes from, I may have I told you that I used to teach, John, I don't know, if, I think I make this in the intro. Uh, back in the day when they gave it the third Saturday of the month, I would show up at the exam site and help people there that last minute. And I have a little dry erase board like uh, Brian's and I would do like, you know, an hour before the test, like anything people wanted to talk about. And that was kind of the inspiration. I thought, well, maybe I can do that again in this format. So. You know, I never, I, I was not aware of that. I did not know yeah. that you did. That. I'm a big whiteboard guy. I used to be just like you, Brian. I was a whiteboard guy. You mean you used to be a school mom too? Uh, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, back in the Reformed. day. Reformed. <laughs> if you don't pass, I don't understand, Nicole. If you only think you say, if you don't pass, oh, the mastery, is that what you're talking about? Uh, I, Nicole, I don't want to be putting this out there for everybody, but uh, I do have some pull at Kaplan. So, you know, if you, you know, need to reset or something, maybe you can send me an email. I'll see what I can do for you. Few months. Oh my God, we got plenty of time. Plenty of time. All right. Yeah, SIE. Uh, I, 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 you know, love the SIE. Uh, I wish I could get people to. Uh, she's small, and mighty. Yeah, I'll tell you the story. Uh, beautiful. I love it. <laughs> A lot of strong uh, Greek women in drama. Big Shot Bob. I can't believe we've got Big Shot Bob. Big Shot Bob. Yeah. You know, he's a famous uh, Laker and Spur hits big shots. Bob Ori, but I'm sure it's probably not that Big Shot Bob. Uh, done with the test. Oh, thank you so much. We love Victoria's test takers coming in. Uh, it's good for morale. You really help build morale with a cheer. It's the Reddits, the Facebook page. I just love it. Uh, I think we did that. Yes, we did. I think we did that one already, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. So I think, let's see, did I miss anybody? Oh, man. Two minutes for cake. I don't know. We're right at the, we're over already two minutes. Brian, you think you can do uh, Yes or no? It's, 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 uh, I'll tell you this much. Okay. No formula whatsoever. Ignore that formula stuff in the textbook on CAPM. Has nothing to do with math. Okay. What's your, what's your little web thing as we sign off here? What, what would you say about CAPM? She needs to know. I just did. No math. Oh, that's it? No formula. That's okay. It. No math. I was I was giving it to you. No math. It's about risk uh, and reward. All right, everybody. We will see you uh, next Tuesday. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard. And as Brian says, you take the test. Don't <laughs> let the test take you. Tell your friends. We'll see you next Tuesday, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>